Hey, how's it going? I'm Grant Swanson, and welcome to another exciting video tutorial. Now, I promise you there will be a Sin City tutorial part two, but in the meantime, I've come up with this. And as you can see, the writing writes on the wall and stays with the camera as the shot moves along. And I'm sure, you, I'm sure you've seen this effect several times in commercials and movies. And if you wanted, you could use it in conjunction with Aaron Rabinowitz's uh, horror text writing tutorial, if you wanted. And basically, we're going to utilize the After Effects paint tools, After Effects tracker controls, and I'll give you some tips on how to use those and how to composite it all together for a realistic shot. All right, so to get started, we're going to drag our footage down into a new comp, and we're going to take our footage and delete it. And that's just to uh, set up our composition with all the same properties as our footage. We're going to create a new white solid, so go Layer, New, Solid, Make Comp Size, and make sure that it is 100% white. Click OK. And in order to paint on this, we have to double-click it and open in a player. I'll just make some more, some more room here. And I already have our paint and brush tips up. So all we have to do now is select the brush tool, and I'll go through some of these settings. Up here, you're going to want to make your opacity. Uh, bring that down to 75% or just something that's not quite 100%. It'll make it more realistic. Maybe even bring it up to 85%. And these all, all these settings look good. I'll make sure you have your duration set to constant, not anything else. Then on the brush tips, uh, just select the 5 pixel diameter preset. Bring the roundness down to about 80. And that'll look good. And you can choose any color you want. Uh, if you're going for that horror feel, uh, you can choose a sort of darker red. We're going to change the transfer mode later on, so you don't want to make it too dark. It'll it'll just look black, but something right about there should be good. And so that's basically all there is to it for setting it up. So come out here and start writing whatever you want. I'll just write mystic text. And by the way, if you have a Wacom tablet. This would be a good time to plug it in. Alright, I've jumped ahead in time to the point where I've got that done. And it's looking pretty good. Just hit V to go back to the selection tool. Make some room here. With the layer selected, hit PP really fast. Just the letter P on the keyboard twice to reveal all our brush strokes. Select the, select the first one. Actually, the last one. Scroll down and select the first one. To select them all, holding down Shift, of course. Twirl down these options and twirl, the, twirl down the stroke options. Uh, and drag your current time indicator out in the timeline to around about, about a half a second. Uh, so just go 15, half a second. And set a keyframe for the end parameter and hit home on the keyboard to go back to the beginning and drag that down to 0%. Now if you drag through here, you can see all our letters animate on at the same time, which in itself is a really cool effect. Uh, but we're going to do something a little bit different. Right now, all the layers should still be selected, so just hit U on the keyboard, and that will just reveal all of the uh, keyframed properties so we don't have to uh, have so much clutter in the way. Now, this first layer down here on the bottom is the M. And so what we want to do, we want to keep that in the, sp in the same spot, and we want to move each of these layers in time by holding on shift to snap the first keyframe to the last keyframe of the previous layer. And we could uh, automatically sequence all these layers, but that's going to create an animated robotic feel that we don't want. We want it to seem natural, and that's why we want to do it ourselves. So basically, with each one selected, just hold on shift and select the next one, hold on shift to snap them all into the correct position. And you can just scroll up and basically move along. Um, and if you want to see what's, what the different layers are that are animating on currently, just drag it through, and at the beginning of each layer, that's what letter is moving on. So right now we're working the line of the T. This is the second line of the T. This will be the I, and then over here we have the dot of the I. Now this layer is special because there's only a dot, so if you look carefully, you can see that it just fades on up there, and we don't want that. <clears throat> so we can select the first keyframe and delete it, drag the first keyframe over, and snap that one into place. Now the eye will just uh, come right on with no transition whatsoever, and that'll be good for now. All right, I've jumped into, jumped ahead in time to the point where I've got all of these done. And as you can see, up here at the top, we didn't have room to continue them, so uh, we'll take care of that though as we move on. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here so we can just see what we're doing. Now, if we do a RAM preview on the keyboard, just hit zero, 
you can see that they look animated. The long strokes come on way too quickly, and the small strokes come on way too slowly, and that's why we didn't want to sequence the layers. Um, so now what we're going to do is we want to drag the endpoint, the last keyframe of those long layers, such as this M. We're going to drag those out a little bit to slow them down. So basically, how far apart these key frames are is how quickly they'll animate on. So the farther apart they are, the more slowly they'll, slowly they'll animate on, and the uh, closer apart they are, the more quickly they'll come on. So basically, just go through here on the shorter ones, like this li line for the Y. You may want to shorten that even a bit. And do the same for all these, just snapping the next one in place. All right, I've jumped ahead in the point in time where I have all those done. And it didn't take too long to do. If we do a RAM preview, you can see that they all come at a much more natural pace. Just wait for this to finish. All right. Um, they can probably slow down a little bit, uh, but our shot is actually pretty quickly, quick, pretty quickly goes by. So we're just going to leave that the way it is. We can stop that, and we're going to move on. So over here in the project panel, drag our footage down into a new composition again. And we're actually, I have the tracker controls up here, I'll just exit out of the paintbrush and the brush tips. And we're going to choose track motion. Now in our shot, we're going to drag to the end, I'll explain why in a little bit. <clears throat> we're actually going to track by using a perspective corner pin, since we're going to want our footage to track onto this projection screen we have here. Now if you are going to use this uh, as a horse shot and you want it in the wall, somewhere on the wall somewhere, you can just... Uh, Choose the transform option, and then of course use the position or rotation options uh, if they apply to your shot. <clears throat> now, if you are going to use this tutorial to go along with a horror sort of feel, and you want it on some wall somewhere, you can just track the shot using the transform property, and then of course choose rotation or scale if they apply to your shot. But since we have this nice screen, we're just going to choose perspective corner pin. I'm going to make some room here and zoom in a little bit. We want to drag our, sh we want to choose our uh, tracking points. Now the reason we're starting at the end of this clip is because we're using perspective corner pin and we, if we scrub through the timeline here we can see that the shot zooms in really quickly there, which is a really cool effect, a really cool nice zoom we have there, but it makes it uh, difficult to track if we tracked it from the beginning. The way that the After Effects tracker works is... No, no, no. The After Effects tracker works a lot better when you're moving away from an object rather than moving towards an object, just because the tracker points have to move less distance physically, and most of the time it ends up in a better track. So we're just going to choose our track points here, drag this first one down to this corner, and from experience we have that large zoom in, I'm going to uh, make the search area a little bit bigger. And, oops. Just drag these over, choosing these nice contrasted ends. Make that a bit smaller. Just drag this up to this corner. And our last tra track point we can drag up to this corner. And that looks pretty good. We'll just zoom out so we can see what we're doing. And Make sure at the end of the timeline, hit end on the keyboard just to make sure, and click Analyze Backwards. And it will take a little bit longer because we enlarge the track points. All right, that's looking pretty good. Before we apply it, we're going to drag our text layer, our text composition, I should say, down, and we'll just hit Enter, and we'll just name it uh, Text. <clears throat> now go back to the shaky screen layer, and it's Player. Choose Edit Target to make sure that the text layer is selected, and it is. And we can click Apply, and that will apply for us. And if you go through now, you can see that it stays on pretty nicely. There's a few discrepancies. And by the way, if you were going to track a video screen on using a perspective corner pin like you might, you'd have wanted to move the points to the edge of the video screen, but we're going to change the transfer mode of this and remove the white anyway, so it doesn't really matter in this shot. All right, so that's looking pretty good. We only have one more step. And that is to tra change the transfer mode of the text layer. So make sure the text layer you have. And we're going to change it to a darken uh, color mode. Um, probably not darken, though. I'll probably choose classic color burn. Just go over there. And as you can see, got rid of it. And that is looking 
really nice. If we just do a quick RAM preview. All right, you can see the text layer stays on there really nicely. And because we use the perspective corner pin, it realigned and we adjusted the position and shaping of our text layer to make it move and look as if it's actually moving in 3D space. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. And once again, I'll try to have that Sin City Part 2 tutorial up shortly. Uh, but in the meantime, I put this together. I hope you enjoyed this. And I'm Grant Swanson for CreativeCow.net.